a tutorial on Laplace transforms and the utilization to solve electric circuits in transients mode. We begin with this circuit. In it, the switch SW has been closed for a very long time. At t equals zero, the switch opens. Well, now that that is so, we want to find, after the switch opens for t greater than zero, plot the energy stored in that inductor. And do the same for the energy in this capacitor over here. We know that the energy in an inductor is one half the inductance times the square of the current of that inductor at any point in time. So what we need to do is find what is the current in this inductor as a function of time, square it, multiply it times L divided by 2, and that is the energy as a function of time, and that is the function that we need to plot. And the energy in the capacitor depends on the voltage in the capacitor, this voltage. In short, we need to find that current in the inductor and this voltage in the capacitor. We need to solve this circuit for t after zero. We need the initial conditions. What initial conditions? IL not and VC not. The initial current in this inductor and the initial voltage. Oh well, the snapshot right before we move the switch at t equals zero minus is necessary to find those ICs. Because the switch has been closed for a very long time, the circuit right before we move the switch is in steady state. Because the source was a DC source, the circuit was in DC steady state. That means that the inductor behaved as a wire and the capacitor as an open circuit. The circuit looked in a snapshot at t equals zero minus like this. Inductor as a short, capacitor as an open circuit. We need to find this current IL naught and this voltage VC naught. Well, this current is easy to find. Nine volts divided 2 plus 5, that is 9 seventh of an amp, that is IL naught. And this voltage, observe that the current in this branch is 0 amps. So the voltage in the 7 ohm resistor is 0, and in this 5 ohm resistor the voltage is also 0. In short, VC naught, this voltage, is merely the voltage in this 5 ohm resistor. A voltage divider, 9 times 5 divided 7. 45 seventh of a volt, that is VC naught. Now the switch opens. This source is not going to be part of the circuit anymore. This resistor is going to have zero current in it after the switch opens, so that resistor will play no role in the final circuit. We concentrate our attention on this loop exclusively. Three resistors, the inductor, and the capacitor. Let's have a look at that. But before doing that, remind ourselves how inductors are replaced by equivalent circuits in the Laplace domain. An inductor with a value of L Henry is if this is the positive direction of the current in that inductor in the time domain, then we're going to represent that with this circuit. If the current is going to be as soon positive with this direction, then the model of that inductor is going to be like so. In short, the initial condition source of the model of that inductor in the Laplace domain is always helping the assumed positive direction for the inductor's current. One way of remembering that is that that source points in the direction of the initial condition. That is easy to remember. The value of the impedance LS and the value of the source is L times the initial value of the current in the inductor. In our case, this is the positive direction for our inductor and this is the model we are going to use. For the capacitor, it's also represented by an impedance in series with a source. In that case, the impedance is 1 over Cs, 
where C is 50 microfarads and the source is going to have the same polarity as the assumed positive voltage of the capacitor. This is not over S. We go back to the circuit, we open that, the 2 ohm resistor disappears, the 9 volt source disappears, and the inductor and the capacitor are replaced by their Laplace transform models. This is what we are left with. What is this value of this impedance that is LS? 0.2s. I'm going to write that with integer numbers. 2 over 10s. And the value of this source is going to be L I L naught, 1870s. 1 over Cs and uh, Vc naught over S. Let's solve that circuit. Solve for 1. Well, let me take this as my reference node, and it is node number 1. Why node number 1 there? Oh, because when I solve this circuit, V1 is going to be the same voltage of the entire capacitor, and that voltage I need to compute the energy in the capacitor. Fine. Well, we write then a KCL equation for node 1. Currents going in 0, and two currents leaving that. This current, by the way, is the current in the inductor. Let me write that equation. Current in the inductor, this one, is V1 plus 18 over 70 divided by the impedance 7 plus 5 plus 5 plus 2s over 10. Here, the current in the inductor is V1 plus 18 over 70 divided by the impedance of that branch. We have two unknowns, IL and V1. Fine, the other equation is the KCL equation here. Zero amps go in, and two currents leave. One is IL, we already wrote that one there, and the other is the current in this branch in the capacitor. V1 minus 45 over 7s divided by the impedance of the capacitor. Two equations, two unknowns, V1 and IL. We enter them in the calculator, like so. There are the two equations. We solve for V1 and IL, that's what we want. We press linear solver, and those are the two solutions, VC and IL, in the Laplace domain. Observe that X is the independent variable and represents the S Laplace variable on the calculator right now. I could have chosen S here, but I prefer X, which is easier to type in the calculator. Let me copy those two values. This is VC, which is V1, and this is the current in the inductor. The voltage in the capacitor and the current in the inductor. Let me find the time current in the inductor and the time voltage in the capacitor. So we square them, use them in the energy expressions, and plot them. The first thing I do is break that system of equations into its components. I go to Programs, Type, break that object into pieces. Two pieces, I know. The two equations I need. Let me work on the current in the inductor. Let me break that equation into its components, into objects. I erase these two. This is the function of S that I want to find the inverse Laplace transform of. Let's do that inverse Laplace transform of that one. Inverse Laplace transform of this one is this expression of time, that is I of t. The problem doesn't ask us to write that in the time domain, even though it's given for us there. In this case, x is t. This is a decan exponential that multiplies a cosine with a given frequency and has another term that we cannot see there. Well, but what we need, actually, is to square that. Excellent. I enter that. I have two of those. I multiply them. That's the square of the current in the inductor. I multiply that times 2, the inductance, divide by 2, and that should be the energy. Well, but what we need is to plot that down arrow and that one red copy, enter out of there. We go to the plotting device here with 2D, GD. In there 
equation, edit the equation, and in there we say just paste the equation I have in hand. Enter, enter again, and then to Windows with a pressed a white key, go to Window and say I want a plot between 0, enter, and 0 0.0. 0 0.05 seconds and in the vertical axis I don't know make it automatic fine erase whatever you have there and do the plotting look that is the energy stored in the inductor let's leave it there let me go enter and get out of there let's find now that uh, voltage in the capacitor this one and do the same break that into pieces program type break the object into pieces this is the voltage in the capacitor let me find the inverse Laplace transform of that variable next Laplace transform inverse Laplace transform of that done that is the voltage in the capacitor as a function of time x represents time here we don't need to write it down because that is not what the exercise asks of us. That is V in the capacitor as a function of T. Enter, square it, divide by 2, and multiply that times 50, 10 to the negative 650 microfarads. That is the energy in the capacitor as a function of time. Down arrow, red, copy enter and now we go to the to the plotter to d3d in there we go down to the equation type edit that and we just replace whatever we have red paste with a new one enter and enter we move to the windows one in here we're not going to touch anything same scale both on the horizontal and vertical axis. Do not erase the previous drawing. No, leave it there. Just draw a new one on top of that one. So you see, this is the energy stored in the inductor, and this one is the energy stored in the capacitor. You see that when the energy in the inductor goes down, the energy in the capacitor goes up. It is as if the energy was leaving the inductor and filling up the capacitor and then it depletes the capacitor and refills the inductor and that energy keeps oscillating between inductor and capacitor. But as they travel from one to the other through those three resistors, the energy available gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's it. Thank you very much. But before leaving, let me plot that with another program just to complete this exercise. We see the energy in the inductor in red goes down to zero at the same time that the energy in the capacitor increases to a peak value. Just the description I gave you a while ago, how they oscillate, they ping pong with energy, but in every bouncing back of the energy it gets smaller and smaller and smaller as some of that energy is dissipated in its path through the three resistors. Thank you very much.